Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to be talking about what I think is the GoPro of emergency lights. Let's get to it. All right, if you're like me and you first see something like this, until you hold it in your hand, you're gonna probably think to yourself, well, that's nothing new. It's not very innovative. What's the big deal? I kind of felt the same way until I did some research, looked into what fellow YouTubers were saying about it. Everybody gave it great reviews. People had certain things that they felt could be improved, but that's gonna be the case with every product. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna tell you why I think this is a nine out of 10 product. It's definitely a winner. Not 100% perfect, but close. So there's a few reasons why I'm now carrying this at my store. Number one is that it got excellent reviews from all my friends here on YouTube. I first came across the Guardian Angel Light on Living Survival's channel, and there was a couple other channels that I seen had done reviews on it, got great reviews. And so that pretty much was enough for me to know that, okay, it's a good product. Those guys are saying it's good, typically it's good. Those are guys I trust. Number two, it's already used by a lot of police officers, first responders. There's a lot of testimonials on the website. They're not those fake testimonials. They're actual people who use the device every day in work. So it's been tried and tested in the field with first responders who vouch for it. Number three is this neodymium magnet on the back. This magnet is incredibly strong. So you can see how strong that magnet is. It is a really strong, like that thing's not coming off. You could put this thing on your vehicle, barrel down the road at 150 miles an hour, and of course, you're probably gonna get caught, and maybe the cop will give you a pass if you're wearing one of these, because chances are he's probably gonna be wearing one of these too. You could have this thing on your vehicle, it will not fall off, even if there's a hurricane, your truck gets picked up by a tornado. It's a very, very strong magnet. I think they're the strongest magnets you can get. And the next thing is, is all of the different use cases for something like this. There's hundreds of different applications for this and the mounting systems are what really make this unique. With this one Guardian light, I can have this in my vehicle, I can have it on a bike, I can have it on a backpack, I can put it on my kid if we're hiking at dusk or nighttime even, I can put it on my dog, you could use it for construction work, police work, that there's just so many different applications for something like this and that's largely owed to the mounting system. There's marine uh, mounts, there's window mounts, there's clip mounts, there's shoulder mounts. And because it latches on with just the magnet, although they do give you an option to screw it in if you want it to be in there hard and fast, but if you do wanna move it around from place to place with ease, you absolutely can do that. The next thing is the absolutely exceptional build quality of this device. When you first see it online, you don't appreciate it until it's in hand. And at first, when I first seen it, I was like, well, that doesn't look very innovative. Emergency flashing red lights are a dime a dozen. But these guys have taken it to a whole new level of functionality and durability. The first thing I noticed when I opened the box was this is not something that's gonna be easy to replicate by a Chinese company because it's built so rock solid. You can drop it. This thing is built for first responders. It's built to be worn every day out in the field, rain or shine. This is not something which could be easily knocked off. Shockproof, dustproof, waterproof, submersible. 
there's no doubt about the build quality. You know, you can throw this thing around. It is absolutely not going to break on you. So, you know. And of course, the best part of the light is its primary use, and that being a flashlight. So it has LEDs, 360, it has an LED right here, and you can just use it in so many different types of functions and configurations, and there's many different styles, color combinations, stuff like that. The sky is the limit, so there is a guardian angel uh, device for everybody, be it for professional use, or for recreational use, or for recreational or for use. Recreational. So I'm gonna quickly demonstrate the functionality for you. All right, so let's first start with this big button on top here. That's the haywire button. That makes every one of the LEDs turn on and just go crazy. That's for emergency use, and that's why the button is so big. Now, this forward means the front. So that's just gonna turn the flashing lights on at the front. And the rear is going to turn on the flashing lights at the back. Now, this button here turns on a light, which is no strobe or flash and so you press it once you get a red light so that's for your preserving your night vision and if you press it one more time you get the full floodlight light bar now if you wanted to and what a lot of police do they're going to have this they're going to wear it on their shoulder say that that was in front of you and so you'll be able to see who's in front of you and then on the back on the rear you can turn on your flashing lights so you know there's lots of police who do testimonials of this stuff and uh, that's, they'll explain all that to you as to how it works in the field if you are in law enforcement. Now, this button right here is the intensity button. So these are the three buttons that turn the light on and they're all gonna be varied in their intensity by pressing this button. So that's low, medium, high. So there's not 50,000 modes. It's not overly confusing. Now there is a USB port on the back, as you can see, micro USB, lithium ion battery, 3000 recharge cycles clips in there nice and tight. Now this is the elite law enforcement version. You can get different color combinations. There's just an endless amount of configurations. There's red, white on the front, red, white on the back, uh, orange, green, green, red, white, green. There's just so many different uh, types. I think by and large, what you're getting here is a robust emergency lighting system, which is by far the best on the market. This is the red, green, red, red variant. We sell five of the most common variants at CanadianPreparedness.com, including the red blue, which is used by police. Now, in terms of using the red blue light, you have to be careful because in some places it's gonna be illegal to use that. So unless you're law enforcement, you're gonna to wanna to look into the legality of using red and blue flashing lights because basically they're gonna think you're trying to impersonate a police officer, which of course is a federal offense. Now there's also infrared. So for police who have body cams, who have you know uh, the, the cameras on their vehicles with the night vision, I don't know how necessary that is, but it's a cool feature, uh, particularly for those in law enforcement. This is not going to replace a tactical light. This is going to ensure that you are seen by others. That's the whole point of this flashlights. It's not so much for you to see, it's for you to be seen. Now, if you're doing the whole gray man, ninja, the wilderness, post-apocalypse, yeah, this probably isn't the best light for that particular purpose, but for every other practical application, for 99% of the other occasions in life, it absolutely is. There is an O-ring in there to prevent water from going in there. I believe it's ingress protection rating level six. So the lifespan of this, I believe it's between four and 150 hours of runtime. I'm presuming that on this mode, you're probably gonna get three to four hours running like this because it's not continuous and the lights are not high powered, but they're definitely high visibility. Just because of that flashing factor, it's gonna get people's attention. And again, that's the whole point of a light like this is to get people's attention. I believe there's 3000 recharge cycles, uh, lithium ion battery, so I'm not sure, you know, I mean, realistically, if you recharge this a thousand times, uh, by the time you've done that, the many, many years that would take, you know, there's gonna be something new that comes out and you're probably gonna to wanna to replace it anyways. Now, just like any good Apple product, this is designed in the USA, but of course it's made in China. Uh, to make something like this in the United States would just cost way too much and these guys would be out of business. All right, so as is, I would give this an easy nine out of 10. There's a few things I think that could be improved. 
to make it a 10 out of 10. Uh, the weight is okay, it comes in at three ounces. You can always lose a little bit of weight with something like this where every generation they're getting a little bit better. I expect that to happen down the line. The form factor is okay, it's a reasonable size and you're carrying that weight on parts of your body where you're not really gonna feel it. You're putting it on your shoulder, you're putting it on a backpack, you're putting it on a clip. So you're not really feeling that three ounces of weight. But three ounces is, you know, in a small form factor like this, it, it feels quite dense, which is good because they got exceptional build quality with this. Another thing I found which was potentially problematic, especially in a stressful situation, is that you have to depress the buttons fairly hard. And I understand why they do that. They don't want this to automatically turn on in your car. So they're thinking about that aspect of it. So if you just like lightly press one of these buttons, it's not going to activate the flashlight, which is a good thing. But I think with something like this, it's going to be put in a place where ideally, I suppose, it's not going to be stuffed in a pack, you know, and because it's USB rechargeable, that means that most people have access to a USB charging cord. Uh, if the battery did run out as a result of doing that or just have a lockout feature so you don't have to make those buttons that hard to depress because it is significant and if I had to you know you really have to push down on it I'm not saying it's impossible or anything like that it just it's a little harder than perhaps it needs to be but I haven't heard that come up before maybe over time the buttons are gonna loosen and you're gonna be a bit more sensitive and easier to use so now these buttons may benefit from some tactile ribbing on there some protruding bump on there so if you're trying to push the button in the dark you know which button you're hitting the center one's pretty straightforward that's easy but these two ones here i sometimes get confused and yes the center one is the one that turns on the light and this is the one that controls the intensity but maybe just having a bit more differentiation there especially in a tactile sense that might help make it just a little bit more user friendly. In the age of cheap and readily available high powered LEDs, I don't think there's a reason why we can't get a little bit more brightness out the front. Now, this is a floodlight, it's meant to be for what's right in your face, but if they could project that light just a little bit further, maybe double, double the lumens on the turbo mode, obviously, yeah, it's gonna run down your battery, but just so you have it just in case, I realize this is not gonna be your primary EDC flashlight. It's not meant to be tactical. It's not meant to chase bad guys down an alley. This is meant for to be on your person. Primarily, it's to use to signal people to your whereabouts and also provide your vision with some limited assistance. Other things they may wanna consider, now there is a strobe on the top there and you can't actually control that LED that's on the top. That's probably the highest powered LED on the whole light bar, I would say. And I'm even blinded just by looking at it. So if you could actually control this without, it, it only responds when you put it in haywire mode. Controlling this LED by itself might be beneficial. And it might be useful to have that strobe forward facing as well, just in case you did need to use this for tactical applications which I think is gonna be very unlikely, but it's just another potential feature. I'm sure they considered it. Maybe they thought it was too overcomplicating, uh, creating a you know overcomplicated user interface, which is going to actually limit your ability to use the device effectively in a crisis high stress situation. The other thing they may wanna add in here is one of those auditory decibel alarms. Like I said, they're not gonna to wanna to add that in all of the variants. Perhaps they could make a personal security guardian angel uh, directed at joggers, which this is directed at recreational users. But you know, if, for female joggers, maybe have a button on here which emitted like 120 uh, decibel loud beeping sound that could be heard for a long distance could be beneficial. Obviously, you're gonna have the problem if it, you're wearing it close to your ear it, it may incapacitate your own hearing as well, but the whole point is to get people's attention. So that could be a lifesaver. So yeah, if you wanna pick up one of these Guardian Angel lights, I'm gonna do 10% off of this. You can get it at canadianpreparedness.com, 10% uh, off. We also sell a variety of different accessories. The cool thing about this with all the different mounts is that you can have a mount on your bike, you can have a mount in your vehicle, on your backpack, on your dog's harness, and basically it's just a matter of taking the light, sticking it on to whichever harness you want to use it to. So that's a really cool feature that you don't really see 
in any flashlight really yet. There's not a lot of flashlight makers who deal a whole lot in accessories. And I think that that really is this thing's claim to fame is just the amount of uh, mounts that you can get for it, the different types of mounts. I mean, I think there's 10 or so different types of mounts. So there's nowhere you can't uh, mount this light. And once again, this is not meant to be a tactical application light. This is not meant for your visibility, even though it does provide somewhat. This is meant for you to be seen. This is meant for you to be identified. So big difference there. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.